welcome everybody back to the channel and we've been working on this video trying to work on this video for a couple weeks but we have a couple other videos in the works besides this so we are going to get around to this one and basically what we're going to do here is a 2023 recap and we're going to start uh, you know with pretty much how uh 23 2023 started out for you robbie and i guess we could start with uh you know uh, the new tubular front end yeah we put a rock solid tube front end on the car and changed some turbo kit stuff up and went to it was a vs80 is what it had on it made good power and stuff and that led to the first race of the year and we went to Wilkesboro. we didn't have any testing but just kind of common all year and that that race would have been the 828 yeah, cash, days. cash days yeah. you come out you pretty much come out first of the year swinging I wouldn't really say swing it. Well, I mean, compared from, to where it's at now. Yeah, for what you were doing right then, you, you come out pretty strong. Yeah. Uh, and the first race of the year, you won. Yeah, it started out. I was kind of joking at the driver's meeting, and then I think you told Keevan he should call me out. Because I had no <laughs> test. Everybody, we know we always go back and forth. Yeah, Keevan's a good dude to race with, too. He so. actually called me out. He was just joking at first. I was like, sure, I'll take it. You know, first off the trailer. That's how it started. And we're, we're going to show some uh, video clips along the way of, you know, of these races we're talking about. And, um, you know, if, if you guys are really interested and really catch it, you can search back through our YouTube page there and find the ones you want to see and watch. I guess from the 828 cash days, we move on to, uh, seems like it's starting to be one of your favorite tracks to race at, which would be Rockingham, which was the 252 front side. Yeah. When that Rockingham redid their track, it was pure concrete. It was, it was really slick. It, if you ever seen like that Decker Boys track up in Kentucky, it's kind of, it was kind of similar. And what's funny about that whole ordeal, is, are there like some, I guess say, street outlaws that been on like the TV show or whatever that were there. Everybody's kind of sitting around the staging lanes figuring out if they're going to go down the track or not because like one or two cars went down and one of them wrecked instantly. And then 
I was like, you know what? I'm tired of waiting. I pulled up, went right home, went up there, made a hit, went right down it. And I was like, then after that, they went and sprayed the track a little bit. So, I mean, it was still a little slick with the concrete, but I think they was trying to get some rubber down. So, I, I understand I'm spraying it, but that was kind of one of those. The surface would have been the equalizer type of races, but, you know, it just they got to think of safety as well. But sometimes you sign up for no prep, you want no prep. This is very true. Um, and, you know, that, that, was, that race was good to you, too, so... I guess um, pretty, pretty much now we uh going to revisit Rockingham again for dig or die. Yeah. Seems like every time we go back, something's a little better, something's a little different. And we'll start moving up, hopefully, classes and stuff every time we go. Because we went, we didn't really have a lot of, we had, I'm kind of bad to not test for a race until like the end of this year. So we went for dig or die after that race. So we basically come back here and went back and race on the backside, and then I think went out in third round because we had a really close race with James in the Corvette and they ended up calling a rerun. Didn't change anything in the car, just went back up there. I think it was a little bit out of the groove and, you know, just had wheel speed instantly and couldn't make it up. So it was kind of a learning experience and changed a lot of ways from that race to the one we went to later on. Actually, the two we went to later this year and you know, learned some things with some weight bias and and just trying to work on our power management. No, that dig or die, that was, uh, that was with the new engine in the car, too. No, that one wasn't. No, not yet. That no. was, we come back and changed That's the right. oil, and it looked real glittery. So we just pulled it out, because if you saw the glitter in it, you would think something was hurt, and pulled it out, and it actually wasn't hurt, so we just threw some bearings in it, go and put it in another car, and hopefully it keeps on going. All right, yeah, I know around that time, somewhere right there was, that's when the new, uh, new engine went in, or issues with the old one there. So then we come back and go back to uh, Killer Street. Yeah. Elk Creek. We was running some good old 570s. <laughs> yeah, they've got some good classes up there. We thought we was flying <laughs> first year. I mean, like, I entered that 570 class and I went like a 569. I thought I thought I was doing something. Then now it's crazy how just a couple months car changes and you know you progress. So it's like I think we'll go back there a lot this year because. I think we'll have a real contender, hopefully, to run in the actual Killer Street class. I mean, they say Killer Street, like it's a street car deal or whatever, but a lot of those cars are race cars. But I hopefully, have a street car that maybe will dip into the fours up there. I don't, mm. I'm not trying to get, I mean, <laughs> I know we've hit a lot of stuff with the last year, kind of trying to keep some setup stuff secret and stuff, but all the new stuff, I mean, I'm gonna be a little more open because you know, it helps out, helps us, helps us out here at the shop. and. Everybody likes to know what you got. I mean, yeah, I know it's it's kind of been like that for years. You always try to keep everything a secret, you know, from 
before before during and now during some of the internet days but anymore i mean we planned on doing a little grud racing last year but every time you try to get a race it's like nobody wants to do it or they want the back tire they want the head i mean they want everything in racing so it's like what's the point in hiding it just have fun and yeah let people you know kind of follow along with the build and who knows they may have a car that won't do the same thing with them but fortunately we can do it here there you go Is there anything when we was at Killer Street? Um, did you find any limits of anything while we were doing that? Yeah, we. I entered two classes and I was hot lapping it. So and it was actually a cooler day up in Virginia, and I made it the second pass. And then the IATs were like 180, 190. And, you know that's not ideal. And you pulled a lot of time out there to keep everything safe, especially with a new engine. Didn't want to hurt anything. And then we. Uh, max out the turbos it would just make like 26 pounds after that it was just creating hot air and then uh so we switched over to the tdi 88 off of tobin's car and put the old three six inch air cooler on it yeah. i don't remember what race was after that you probably remember yeah, yeah uh, let's see you Killer Street Elk Creek. Then we come back and we go to our hometown track, Wilkesboro, for the uh, Saturday Night Street Fights. Right. That's one of my favorites because, I mean, they prep the track during the day and then after that they quit prepping. And, I mean, we were still fighting some suspension stuff on the car and that's before I, I was kind of stuck on the old school way of, you know, make the car squat and get it, you know, as far as fast as you can. We changed a lot of things in the car now to try to get some separation out of it and I mean, I don't see how it was working and how it was running what it was, but I mean, it was going, you know, mid fives at that point. But I mean, it was just absolutely killing the tire. You can see it in videos. I mean, it, I mean, looking back on it now, it was pretty dumb of how it was actually doing what it was doing. But it worked. You got some wins out of it. I mean, it's like everything else progresses with time. You learn new ways to set a car up. done well with it very well and then we go from uh wilkesboro we go we travel again back down to darlington and that was a two-day race yeah they raced the front side on friday 
which I'm kind of glad it went on Friday because <laughs> it was just me and Kevin that entered the street class. I guess everybody got scared, didn't want to enter because it was us two there. And so we hopped in small tires well, but we raced the front side. We split, made a little money then. And on Saturday, he didn't run the back side, but there was a couple other cars. And then one race from there that really stuck out to me, I raced uh, Fox Body, I think it was in the finals of the street class. And uh, we just had put the new turbo on it. And it had to, you know, because it had the 88 on it. It had like 103 backside. And it was just it's kind of learning the tune up stuff in it. And it was real lazy. If I, I, I mean, I was sitting in the pits, you know, I mean, I, I worry about what I'm going to put in it. And, I thought I had the perfect tune up in it to go down the track. It wasn't going to spin. It was going to be perfect. I let go of the trans brake button, and it was just a turtle like it. <laughs> it wasn't moving at all. But instantly, I grabbed a scramble, and it finally lit off, and he was actually blowing the tires off. And then I think he got a little traction back, but when mine lit off, it's kind of like I went around him like he was sitting still. And I still had the scramble pinned and didn't know it, so it probably made 30, 35 pounds, and it was white smoking all over the lane and ended up coming around him and won the street class down there well, for that one. When they see the video clip of that right there, they're going to think there's no way you're going to catch this guy. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you just hear the tone of the motor and everything just, just all of a sudden, there it was. White, like I said, white smoke and just... Just a big learning curve with that turbo. Right. Then we go to back to no, actually that's the first time at your Crossville that year. Yeah, I think we'll go back some more there this year. It's a fun track, it's really <coughs> fast. I went I went faster there off the trailer than I have any backside stuff and didn't even have any th real power in it. I had to race Leo first round and had the old voodoo doll and he forgot to turn the CO2 on, <laughs> edged him out at the end. Uh, that but, track's real bumpy, but I mean. Kind of like the sketchy bumpy stuff. I mean, yeah. It, it just throws a curveball for everybody. Unfortunately for Crossville, though, yeah, we got rained out. Yeah, it rained out. So, you know, we, I, you know, I enjoyed it myself. Uh, looking forward to going back there. Digger die again in July. Yeah, that's when. So that digger die, that's the big small power one. It was really hot, but I was only going there. It was like a three, four hundred dollar test pass. It is what it is, but it, obviously it paid off for the one later this year. We changed bar angles tremendously, changed shock settings, changed. You know, if it had something to be changed, we changed it because that was the point in the year that I changed it all over to get a lot of anti squat in the car. And I talked to a few people in there, and the more people you talk to, it seems like it's the way to go with this stuff now. It used to, like I said, people was always wanting, you know, squat the car. You don't, you don't want any anti squat. You want all the squat. And now, you know, we figured this uh, anti squat stuff out, and it seems to be working for a lot of people. And there's really not a lot of information out there on the chassis like mine with the three link stuff. And luckily, I got a couple of close friends that 
helped me out and kind of you know gave me some pointers and obviously you can't just put their setting in the car you got to figure out your own settings because everything's different so we went down there then i drew uh zach hole he has an f body and actually he went down to three cars and i think he beat me first round like a car and a half two cars maybe yeah so to be that close to a guy going down to three cars i was, I was pretty happy for one pass And after dig or die, you, I know you figured out the suspension pretty good right there. You were uh, wanting to get a little weight out of the car. What yeah. little bit we could, you know. Well, we had a race before that, and we had a test and tune that night, and it actually went up there. And made, I switched over to pro brackets because we went to anti squat. So I figured with radio with separation, it's got to be fast. And, uh, you know, we went up to Wilkes Pro test and tune. Made two solid passes that went low fives pretty much off the trailer. Well, I drive it there, but it wasn't technically off the trailer. <laughs> and uh, Off the off the highway. <laughs> yeah, off the highway. You know, I made a low five and set a PB second pass down the track. And I was just amazed by it that the car actually worked. Cause the first pass put a tune-up in. I was like, it's, you know, I figured it's going to blow the tires off because we have no data on radials, no nothing. And then, set, and then the third pass, it actually twisted the lower control arm bracket. It, I guess it just had, you know, so much bite hooked up so good. I mean, it, it, I've been a lot faster 60 foot than I did there, but at the time that was my fastest 60 foot. And I mean, it was in the 30s up there on the ETYs. And then uh, we got that fixed on that Friday. it on that Saturday at that race which I mean we went to the second chance finals with Leo and we played a little bit of rock paper scissors see who crosses the finish line first and I won so technically I got the win there but we was both in the finals and then uh, that race was the point I decided we was just gonna rewire the whole car and get a lot of weight out of it and you know make everything I guess say make it a little more simple and you know, take a lot of the junk out that you don't need um, but I mean, it, it's still a heavy car, even with that wire and weight out of it. Yeah, it really surprised you how I mean how much you actually really took out because we weighed everything, and then you know obviously you know, checked the car before and after to see what the weight difference was, and it's, it's still no, it's still not light. Obviously, obviously it's not. So and it still won't even be light this year, I don't think. So all the rewires done, cars ready to race again, and we go back to Wilkesboro again for another Saturday night street fights. Yep. Well, we haven't seen Tobin before that. that we that's right. Got it for the driving right issue fixed. Cause luckily we did. Like I said, we hit Wilkesboro up for a test and tune the night before this race, and it was a struggle. Like first pass, the car crossed up, went all the way over in the other lane. I mean, it's never done that. It was it was really odd. And then the last pass that night made major improvements and first time I ever felt a wheelie and if I if I knew what I knew now I just held it out because I'm used to it I kind of know what the feeling is but it was definitely odd
Saturday night street fights again, and we had a grudge race locked in with Keevan, which earlier in the day we tested, and you know we were knocking tents off our PB, just coming straight out of a car with, that was just rewired, reset up everything, and I think we ended up getting down in the teens, you know the five teens. I I, I ain't afraid to say I mean we because you know, we're changing the setup and obviously when you change setup you, you know your goals always go faster but i mean that you know i think it's 3800 pounds race weight in the test pass when we, we went almost 140 um on the test pass so we thought we had a pretty solid car then the track had a lot of downtime and i didn't really account for it because there was so much going on in the lanes drawing chips double entering and stuff and didn't really change the tune up and we raced keevan you know like i said first round street class and it obviously would smoke the tires, but you know, come back around for small tire. And like I said, we laid down that PB pass uh, for the year. We raced Houston, and he got me probably by a bumper, but that was my fault. I was sleeping on the light, and you know, it would have been cool to go another round in small tire because there, there was like five or six cars, but it was some hitters there. Heavy hitters, definitely. So it would have been cool to line up with them. I mean, I'm real competitive, so it's kind of why we're doing the changes we're doing this year. And, who knows it may end up full small tire at this point, but <laughs> I just like, you know, I like chasing the faster cars. Obviously, some more testing tunes in there to get ready for Glock. No prep yeah. kings. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Nice track. We've never been there. And never been to one of the no prep kings events. And we was trying to get on the locals only deal. And we were actually an alternate, but the last guy showed up at like the last minute. So we didn't get that deal. Hopefully, if they come back, we're going to try to get in it again this year. And then I think, I think we would have had a real <coughs> solid competitor there. I think well, Turbo John ended up winning, but... I mean, seeing some of the cars that were in there, I mean, I know Keevan was in there, so I mean, we're close with each other, so I feel like we had the most, you know, a good chance in there out of any of the classes we ran, but we raced Friday, it rained Saturday, we raced Sunday, but I raced Ryan Tolly on Sunday, and you know, I stood it up pretty high, and he, you know, he edged me out because, you know, you can't really go forward if you're going up. <laughs> this is true. So then... Close to home again. Um, right, we go back to Mooresville Dragway. Where you run the, uh, yeah, that was the modern a, class? Yeah, and the extreme street. That was a busy day. Oh, yeah. We raced. Had to race uh, Team Denver Jordan's car twice. And then that was, you know, it's tough both times to race them. Had to race Zach first round. And had to race another new edge that we beat. You know. And that day there was, we were doing our thing and just going rounds, you know. Just oh, wait a minute. You talking about? I mean, oh, I don't know which car you're talking about. Well, it's not the same new edge as Jordan. Jordan's oh, car okay. is actually fast. Yeah, but I, I know. I know the, Yeah, you had to race two of them. Actually, I remember. I actually distinctly remember you making that pass. I believe that is actually. That was the only pass the whole day that touched the scramble. Yeah. It was but, like thirty pounds, my thing of it is, my, me, for me, because I, uh, I was actually standing at the line fussing at you like, what are you doing, making a sandwich? It's yeah. like, you left like really late yeah, on I mean, the line. You don't never really take a take a race for granted and think you've got it, you know, wrapped up, but sometimes you, you sleep a little bit because you don't want to jump and give it away right. when, you, when you think you may have the other car covered. And obviously, you'll see in the video we had him covered, but uh, then the next.
race we went to because we went modern there. Yeah. And then, let's see where we got that Wilkesboro again. Uh, after Mooresville, we uh, yeah we come back to uh, Wilkesboro for the uh, full tilt, full yeah. tilt no print. They had a fast ET deal or whatever, and then we didn't enter it, but they were announcing throughout the day who had the fastest this and that. I think we ended up having like the third fastest ET. Yeah, it was um, actually a pretty pretty crisp. I think I think if we were on radios, we might have creeped out second place because I mean we were making some good passes, uh, good passes on like some more out slicks, but. I think we had radios we might have had a chance to better our pv because the track come around got really good and then it got cold so it got a little slick because we made it down the four cars and the small tire against uh chiffin yeah got a little slick up top and once again i was sleeping I <laughs> on that this year but that was pretty neat race how they had it how how chris actually had that set up where people mm-hmm. could you know win a little money you know for their time and everything so i look uh, forward to that maybe again next year hopefully hit the road again and we travel back down to Darlington backside. Yeah, that was another one we double entered and I think yeah, just double entered. I don't think a triple entered. Because then ran Extreme Street and late model down there. Then first round of Extreme Street race Dakota's S ten who's getting that figured out. So that's gonna be pretty fast this year. And then next round we drew the same new edge from Lorsville. And I really think he thought he had me wrapped up on the backside because some, I, I, sense a little, some, I sense a little grudge going on here for yeah, some reason. No grudge, there. Be all right. no grudge. No. He, he well, didn't. friendly grudge. I know we all like to talk some friendly trash or whatever. But yeah, I mean there was some trash talk saying that I couldn't go down bad surfaces and this and that. And, uh, he's always wanting to race on the street, and we might make that happen someday. But first round, and you know, for him to think I wasn't going to go down the track, he actually smoked the tires, and then uh, you know pulled the shoot on him at the end just to. Put a little, you Man. know, salt on the wound. And uh, just, you know, you got to do a little stuff like that sometimes. And sometimes it comes back and bites you because we raced Jordan in the late model class. Yeah. We went a couple rounds in that class again. So we, won. we didn't win. Did we win anything down there? I don't think I we did. I can't remember if we did or not. I mean, we just went some rounds. Yeah, it's we went several. Second we, chance. Yeah. I, mean, I, made, I wore out a set of tires. Well, yeah, but you made some good passes going. Yeah, it was just a good I think laps. you ended up making like eight or nine r- passes down there. So you went several to get rounds. Some laps for this year, hopefully, because there's some races going <coughs> on down there. back to Rockingham again and you know the, the the Darlington or the Rockingham was back for the uh, end of the year last race of the year backside and the difference between Rockingham and Darlington backside how would you say that compares to each other it's substantially different <laughs> but Rockingham was a different animal this last one I mean it was really fast Friday night it wasn't really fast it was really slick but Saturday, I put pretty much the same tune up in it. It was super. I could have put way more in it. And I should have. Maybe could have went to third round in small tire. Who knows? But we did win late model there. And then, let's see, we raced. And j- just, I mean, I'm going to put it out there. I mean, obviously, you won Friday night, like you said, late model. And you won some passes. So you jumped right in small tire just yeah. to. Just want to see where we're at. You know, we went around. I mean, you got a 3,800 pound car with tags and insurance and drive it anywhere that goes round in small tire, or at least one round. That's something to say, I guess. Uh, you, you went out there and give it a try.
that was, uh, like I said, the last race of the year, and you you had plans after that race to start doing something else. But I do want to say, you know, we, we do have several other people racing with us. Uh, hopefully pick up a few more. Uh, I want to, you know, say thank you to those guys racing with us all year and traveling with us. And, you know, I feel like we've all learned from each other, you know, helping, you know, hey, my car did this, you know, getting passes, data logs, whatever you want to call it, you know, just kind of sharing the information amongst us, you know, to improve our program plus theirs. So, yeah, I mean, just looking back on this year, I mean, it's crazy to look back at some tune-ups I had from the first of the year to this year and see how much I've progressed and what I've learned. And, you know, it shows on the other people's cars I'm helping them and how their cars are running on, you know, minimal boost, minimal, you know, minimal time and stuff like that. I mean, you know, these guys, they don't have the wallets to, you know, hurt motors every weekend and, you know, hurt parts all the time. So they got to race, you know, race safe and race conservative and then, uh, you know, just be smart about it. And, if you need that little extra power, you know it's there. You can put it in it. And it's just, you know, it's kind of cool to, to see the progression, I guess, of, of, you know, the shop and, you know, how I've come, you know, like just like I said, just in a year, the things I've learned with, you know, different things within the holly and, you know, some other ECUs that we're hopefully going to start tuning soon. Yeah, and, and sometimes we, we kind of had a little running joke with, you know, amongst all of us all year. Sometimes less is more. Yeah, we've, we've proven that a few times. Go out there and, and think, you know, well, oh, man, I'm going to have to run everything my car's got to win this. And But you've, like you said, with the tuning, things you've learned, suspension setups, you've been able to actually you know, go faster with... I mean, all of our... I, mean, I have a few of the guys that race with us with their shots, that and the bar and stuff, and... Yeah, I, I would never thought a year and a half ago I knew anything about it. You know, it's just hours of research, reading, talking. I mean, just testing. <laughs> if if, pe if people can see some of the testing we've done and where we've tested at at times and not told nobody, they would be like, y'all are crazy. I never thought a year and a half I'd know some of the things I know now and the things I'm doing now. I mean, that's, that's definitely a, an eye-opener to see where we may be at at the end of this year. I mean, some of the things were changing on my car. I mean, there's not a lot of people in the area that are, are getting ready to do some of the stuff I'm getting ready to do. And you know, if it all works out, even if it don't work out, you know, we can show it and, you know, see how it works out. And, right. Well, you can show the, the previous setup you had on your car with the different size turbos. I mean, we could go back to a couple of years ago. Uh, I'll touch on that for a minute. When you were stick shift, first time with the turbo, and then that just one thing led to the other, going to the automatic, going yeah, to different turbo. There were so turbo. many things that, like parts I bought when I was changing over to turbo for a stick shift that I was like, why'd I even buy them? Because the things I know now, that was just a waste of money. Because hey, and you can help somebody with yeah, that. That's the thing. You know, I wasted a lot of money. Hopefully, if somebody wants us to do something to their car, you know, we can save you the time money. You know, you get an issue on the dyno. You know, I'd say, you know, my car's already experienced that, or so, or whoever's car that we've tuned on or raced with, well, we've already experienced that. We know how to fix it the right the first time. Right. And so that pretty much brings us to what your new setup is going to be now. Yeah, we're, From, yeah, we're changing over to their Force Performance uh, 78, 75 turbos. I mean, haven't told a lot of people the size, but like I say, I mean, there's no secrets, and, you know, we're... We're hoping it'll spool them. It should spool them because um, we got hooked up with a dump valve uh, set up from Advanced Racing. And so, I mean, we're going to try everything we can. And there's, a, you know, there's a few things that, you know, we're, we're not really going to speak on them yet until we figure it out to see if it works. And then if it works, it, it may be a game changer for some Coyote people in the area. Yeah, I hope, like I said, we're, we're not scared to. And I know you're not scared to jump out there and... You know, like I said, if it fails, it fails. I can't say we didn't try or you didn't try or one of our guys didn't try. You know what I'm saying? I know. I think that pretty much covers everything. Anything you want to add as far as what to look forward to? or? See, we told them the turbo size, didn't we? Yeah, okay. we told them what we was doing. Yeah, we're changing over, like I said, to the force performance turbos and... Don't try some new things, and hopefully if it works, it might be an eye-opener for some Coyote or even just S197 chassis people. And, you know, we're always trying to look 
for things that you know we specialize in and, and to be better at and hopefully help grow the business and like i said you know if you've already gone through the growing pains whether it be you or some of the guys that race with us you know we can take take what we've learned and help other people to you know i don't want to say well yeah i guess you kind of want to say not waste no money or have to go through the growing pains but yeah, we basically we sit here at real world, you know, turning the wrenches, seeing the results on the dyno, trying to figure out what works best first, first and foremost. So yeah, like I said, I feel like you know, a year and a half, two years ago, I never thought I'd know what I know now and be doing what I'm doing. So hopefully, the next year or two, we progress even more and you know, broaden our horizons some with some different ECUs that are starting to get more, uh, you know, known like the Haltech stuff coming up for LS and. You know, hopefully getting some fuel tech stuff possibly and, you know, just kind of you know we we started a business here and we, we bought into it and I guess, you, know, you just gotta find your niche and you know figure out what works best for you and I think hopefully this no prep no great stuff is kind of gonna take off for us and we can kind of you know make a name with it but basically we're going from you know street cruising from very pretty much very mild to wild setups yeah. you know yeah we still do street car you know camp kits stuff like that but I mean I got a little personal preference that I like this turbo holly <laughs> you know, making but, big power stuff true well, not, not, every, not everybody's always going to want to do that but if we want to do it go to more of the race oriented side you know we got that covered too so like I said from mild to wild I like I mean yep so I guess and that will lead us into hopefully a big year this year because Hopefully our first race of the year is going to be once we hopefully get a lot of our work done that we're trying to get done on the car. I don't want to go if I'm not tested, but I may still go anyway. So I haven't sent any lock-in money. Just like to make sure I get the car done first. Well, that sounds good to me. So I guess the only thing left is... Yeah, just get to work and get it done. Get at it. Guys, hope you liked the video. Leave us some comments. Let us know what you think. Anything you want to end it with? Uh, I don't know. Better not hurt no feelings. I already hurt enough. Oh my gosh. <laughs>